how do we have that conversation? Generally speaking, I like to have that, that younger generation approach the older generation with this kind of framework in mind. It's saying, I have, especially if they have their own operation and they just don't know what's going to happen with the land base or with the, the equipment, uh, you know, the, the older generation had just, just doesn't talk about it. Uh, anytime it's brought up, it gets shot down. What? What? Whoa, 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 whoa. You're saying that maybe an old farmer might not talk and talk about something uh, important like that? Is it, That's breaking news, Clint. Let's sound what? the alarm. Sorry, what's, keep going. Once or twice I've seen it happen. <laughs> um, but really, the approach is this. It, 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 if I'm in that younger generation's shoes, I'm saying, I'm looking out for my family. I'm looking to, to protect what I've built, uh, whether that's part of the operation or not. And Part of that, part of being a good steward of my operation and part of being a good, um, you know, business owner for, for my family is understanding and planning the future. And so, um, you know, dad, uncle, whoever it is, I'm looking at planning out, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years for my operation right now. You know, and, and I like to say, you know, say that you talk to me, say that you talk to a third party right? that just generally neutralizes things. You know, you know, I was talking with a, with a, um, a guy who works with this kind of thing, and, and he really encouraged me to, to see, you know, part of my 5, 10, 20 year plan is I don't know, you know, what, what place I have in your future plans. And so you just kind of bring it up as, hey, I'm looking out for my family. I, I just I need to plan this to be a good business person. And. You, you approach it with humility and humble and, and with the approach that says, I'm not expecting anything. I'm not anticipating to receive anything, but to be, you know, to have a well thought out plan, I just need to know whether there's anything on the table here or not, or how things are going to look. Um, but, but really it, it's, I think it's key to, to approach it that I'm not entitled to anything here, you know? And I think that, uh, if you have that attitude going into it, understanding that, hey, I'm looking out for my family here, then generally they're a little bit more willing to open up. No, not all the time. Um, you know, and, and I've heard some people say, you know, my dad said, well, you'll find out when I pass away. You know, and, and if that's the case, then, then so be it. And, and then that's when I tell that, that younger generation, okay, then you can assume that you're getting nothing. What's that conversation maybe we should be looking at if we're not directly tied to agriculture or we are and we need to have this conversation because we need to have it first and foremost i would just encourage strongly encourage the owner generation to be the ones to initiate it that conversation goes something like here's what our plan is or we don't have a plan and we are working on putting a plan together um and getting everybody in that in that room and it's saying here's our plan you may or may not agree with it you don't have to like it um, but ultimately these are our assets that we're going to pass along in this manner we have some you know farm kids we have some off farm kids here's our current plan this could change depending on you know nursing home stays uh if we buy a house in arizona you know things things could change but as of right now here's what our plan is any questions? As simple as that. Now, that's assuming that there is you know, some type of a plan in place. If there is no plan in place, that's what I really encourage, uh, you know, reaching out to somebody like myself or, you know, a good trust and estate attorney. Uh, even, you know, some CPAs can give you some good, you know, tax guidance and referrals. But whenever I work with, with, with a farm transition, there's, there's a couple of key things that are just right off the bat. The first thing is, uh, taking a complete inventory, what do we own and how do we own it? Uh, you know, how are things legally titled? Just because when we dig into that, we find out a lot of a lot of hidden, uh, you know, potential pitfalls uh, that that could happen with just that one exercise. So that's step number one. Step number two is we sit down separately. The the owner generation, we're going to list out what are our goals and objectives, and then the successor generation. What are our goals and objectives? Separate rooms, not together, right? Th these are these are what you see happening in the future. 
Now you can take these two sheets of goals and objectives, put them together and see what things line up and what things don't line up. And oftentimes there's gonna be a few that do line up, but there's a lot that don't. Now those are areas that we need to open up the communication on. And, and then that's when you know, that family meeting needs to happen and, and then we can collaborate, you know, depending on the relationship dynamics. Um, but but that's that's the approach that it goes into it now saying, hey, I don't have a plan. What do you kids think should happen to this stuff? And then you have, um, you know, uh, husbands and wives and in-laws that they all have opinions. And uh, that's when things can get messy. And then it, and then it becomes a I don't want to deal with this. It's uncomfortable. There's conflict surrounding this. I'm going to kick this can down the road until eventually there's no more road to kick the can down. The full MTOM is available now.